special guest, Elizabeth Harden. Correct me if I pronounce that wrong. Is it Harden or is it hard on? With the pronunciation. Oh, that reminds me. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you so much. I know, <laughs> having mine on. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, so you and I, for those who don't know, we actually go a little bit far back. You know, we've known each other for a while now, haven't we? <sighs> we did, good old Missouri State. Good old Missouri State. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I I finished. I got my got my degree, got my BFA. Yes. Yes, please. Oh. Yes, you're all the way all the way across the uh the United States. So you're in Pennsylvania right now. So why, uh, what have you been doing out in Pennsylvania? Oh, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties. Hang on. People are saying they can't hear you. Why can't they hear you? That's super strange. It's not, it's not you. I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, let's see what we can do here. Okay. Try speaking now. No, and now I can't hear you. <laughs> what is going on? Oh no, okay, so we might have to. I don't, I don't know what's happening with the, the sound. It's not coming through on my end. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. Can you sorry. hear me now? Can everybody hear the beautiful Elizabeth now? This is a running theme. Don't worry. This happened on Thursday Thoughts. If anyone <laughs> tuned in the show that I do on Thursdays, it fell completely apart in the first 15 minutes and we got it back on track. Oh to my any of the goodness. people. I have a small PR team here in Pennsylvania that just started aggressively texting me being like, can't hear you, can't hear you. I'm like, well, <laughs> I was I, like, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, we are, it, there we go. Okay, we're good now. I'm so sorry, everybody. That's on me. Uh, I can't, I can't didn't... be in and produce a show at the same time. I just can't do it. <laughs> well, well, they didn't, we'll catch them up real quick. So go ahead, tell us where we're at. You, we'll, we'll start over. <laughs> yes. So we just introduced ourselves. 
uh, you yes, know, that's all. That's all you missed. <laughs> that's it. And we uh, we went over. We we've known each other, uh, you know, back from Missouri State University. Yes, we went to college together. <laughs> class of, of two thousand sixteen. <laughs> Yes, I almost said 12, but that's the year I graduated I, high school. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to age ourselves. <laughs> no, that's why, no, enough. God. Uh, mm. So yeah, we went We went to college together. We are we both did. conquering the coasts. You know, um, that was, uh, Springfield, Missouri was where I went to my first drag show. I went to my did first- Did you go to Martha's Vineyard? I went to Martha's Vineyard and it was my very first drag show. And there was this <sighs> beautiful queen named Angelina Dupree. And I was just a young little thing. And the, a couple of the people I went with, they said, Hannah, go, go give her a dollar, you know, take this and go Mm -hmm. give it to her. And I was just like, okay. So I wandered over with this dollar. She takes my head and shoves it into her. Right in the breast. breast And just (laughs) shimmies and I come out of there gasping for air and the. Right up in uh, either silicone, socks. Uh, you can push whatever you've got there together. Whatever uh, it was. I've done that to it, people before. It was a, an experience I won't forget. I think it changed me for the better. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, uh, well, welcome. So we're actually, you have a beautiful left half of your face. It's gorgeous. <laughs> um, so, so I didn't want to keep you from, uh, you know, going at it, but... We're going to, I'm going to try to take some tips from you as you are doing the right half of your face and I'm going to kind of go along, but, um, I believe that you're going to get started with your eyebrow, right? I am. I'm going to get started. I'm going to get started with my eyebrow real fast. I also, I'm thinking as much as I'm, I'm loving my backdrop right now because my hands are going to start moving and I'm going to start looking at the gaps. I'm going to, this was the only time I was ever going to be in the workroom of RuPaul's Drag Race. So I wanted to do it for our meeting, but I'm going to take off this real fast um, just so that I can focus and things will pop a little bit more. So there we are. All right, we're good. It's gorgeous. Um, so yes, I'm going to block out my eyebrows, which is my least favorite part of anything because I have giant uh, man eyebrows. And uh, I think your eyebrows you... actually have very nice shape. They have Thank a very you. Nice shape. I... It is the, my boy brows and, and the shape that they have is uh, the driving force behind not shaving them because there's a part of me that I don't do this. I don't do drag enough to be able to rock um, not having eyebrows or to draw them on every day. So yeah. I don't shave them. Uh, That's a lot I just, of work. It That's is. So I just invest, I invest heavily in um, Elmer's glue stick. And if you are blocking out your brows, if you, um, cause a lot of drag will translate to cosplay very easily. And the communities really overlap uh, more than people will think. Uh, or if you are just wanting to play with your face and you're blocking out your brows. Um, I cannot uh, talk about enough how much uh, just an Elmer's disappearing purple glue stick does the job. Yeah, I think I've, I haven't gotten to that point uh, yet where I, really want to glue down my eyebrows, but I know that, um, you know, there are somewhere if I wanted to do a really thin or if I wanted to change the shape of my face, um, that's kind of something that really helps. It completely changes your face shape when you it re- adjust your eyebrow. It, it really does. And for me, one of the, the, one of the main reasons that I do it is because when I'm, and you can see it right now, just with my natural eyes, my eyes are very set in. Um, I, as a, when I have like my boy face, I have a very pronounced crease already because I'm not wearing any makeup on this side. This is just like how far back my eyes go. So it already does a very low look. So when I do like my eyeliner and shadow, you don't see a lot of definition. So I block out and move everything up a little bit so that you see a little bit more of that because I've just now got highlight all in this area. Mm -hmm. Um, all of that, just so I have a bit more of a, uh, a feminine and you can see more of the color. Um, otherwise it just, it's, it just all gets lost. I love it. And um, I love that you've gone with purple. So we're going to match today. Cause I've also decided to ooh. go with purple. I'm very excited. Um, uh, yes. So as you're gluing, I would love yes, to please, hear talk to a me. little bit about, um, kind of what you've been doing in Pennsylvania. So, I mean, last, last I heard, I mean, you've gone to New York, you've done the New York scene, you've done the New York drag scene for a little while. Um, <laughs> It just, yeah. you've just been everywhere, but now you're in Pennsylvania and I'd love to hear about what you're doing 
there? So I, um, right now I work um, for the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, which is um, on Mount Hope Estate uh, in Mannheim, the like Mannheim Lancaster area of, of PA. And um, my primary, I, I came out here uh, to work for, for the Renaissance Fair, which is a um, 13 uh, weekend long festival that runs from uh, the beginning of August to the end of October. Um, and it is a beautiful Elizabethan village on like 40 acres of land. Um, it's a very interactive improv theater, um, which I love. And I have done that now for three years. Um, and after I, I did it my first year and I went back to New York and I auditioned again uh, for just any and everything, but the fair reached out and was like, we'd love for you to do it a second time. And then I came out and I did, after that they had a Christmas show that they do in their mansion. And I stayed and I did Christmas. And then when Christmas was over, they were like, do you want to do our murder mystery show that's in the spring? And I was like, I would love to. And then it became my third year of fair. And then it was Christmas. And then it was murder mystery. And now the summer is approaching and we are getting ready for our fourth year of fair. So I am, You're I just, love it. I've gotten to do they, so much they of everything. Gotcha. Yeah. They snagged you. I know. I, I call this place, um, if anyone out there uh, and yourself, Hannah, watch American Horror Story, um, I feel like this place is the the American horror story of theater because it's often the same it's, it's the same group of actors and they come back at another year and they and play another character different adventures. and they just <laughs> keep having adventures. So uh, I'm, I feel like the the Jessica Lang of Renaissance festivals. So. Oh my goodness! And uh, and when we talked earlier this week, you had mentioned that you mm -hmm. also have been doing work for the company kind of the overarching company you did a, a holiday drag show um yes and as well as so, you, you wrote a a shakespearean-esque uh show as yeah. well that did its debut um, this year or last year i uh of last season yeah so after my after my second year of fair um we were it was october we were um doing rehearsals for Halloween because the, the fair itself has a, has a main storyline that each festival day follows. And then in October, they add in a little bit of that mythical element and it changes for Halloween. Um, so we were in rehearsals for that and I was approached by the artistic or the entertainment director um, of the fair, Jesse Hamill. And she came up to me and she was like, listen, we were wondering if maybe you wanted to do a drag show in the um this it's called the barn and barrel and it's this beautiful rustic barn venue that's on property and i was like oh absolutely i would love to and uh it was just one of those things that i had i had guest spotted at drag shows in new york um my primary uh exposure to drag when i lived in new york city was uh, on wednesday nights uh this wonderful drag queen by the name of uh, gilda wabbit uh <laughs> did a like sort of like open mic drag night where drag queens could come out and if they had a couple of songs they could perform and they could get their tips they could have fun and then they you know call it a night and so she was she was it was her show and uh the dj and this her like partner in crime uh aria derchi um were super wonderful and welcoming to me so i had done a lot of guest spots but i had never had my own show and so i did um my first ho 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 for the holidays and i was very blessed to be asked to do it a second time we did it last year and it only got bigger and it got better and then um the owner and jesse reached out to me after the success of that and they were like well do we think that alex could do a drag show for the fair and uh you know it seemed like a daunting task at first and i apologize i'm going to do another layer of glue um it seemed like a daunting yeah. task at first but um Drag and Elizabethan England really go hand in hand when we think about Shakespeare and theater and how women were not on the stage. So I wrote a 45 minute um, show called um, Taming of the Shrews uh, and then like semicolon Shakespeare's Drag Race. And it's all about uh, Shakespeare's premier female illusionist, the lady best intentions, um, trying to find Shakespeare's next drag superstar. So it plays off of the archetypes of Will and Grace. It makes loving fun at RuPaul's Drag Race. Please don't sue me, World of Wonder. Um, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So. Oh, man. And I was just, you know, I would love to snag that script for a West Coast debut. So I, 
I will listen, whatever whatever you want to charge. I will <laughs> I will I, put it on listen, out here. Oh, uh, we can definitely talk about that. We, I'm we, so we are, excited. We are good times. I'm gonna do if I can't one see more it, layer. I'll produce it. Yeah. So how many layers of uh, glue do you <laughs> tend to do? So anywhere between four to five, depending on my environmental circumstances. Um, like it's a relatively cool day and I have a little Kenmore fan on me right now. So this is drying fairly well. And I don't, what I just did is I, like, I felt over it to kind of feel if I, if I can feel any ridges. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not feeling anything. So I think I'm going to end with here. What I am going to do real fast is I'm going to, I've got a little cup of water here. Um, and I'm just going to get my finger a little damp uh, and I'm going to run over the brow just to smooth out anything because there's nothing more frustrating when you have those grooves and you go to start painting later, um, like your brush getting caught in stuff or... Um, or you've got like a hard line. People can see where you yeah, glued your you've brow. Yeah, you've got you a hard like line. feather it like, down. Yeah, exactly. Because like sometimes you'll hear like, I don't know if anyone's ever heard the term like, you look like you kind of got like oatmeal up there. It gets a little oatmeal-y. <laughs> if you are like doing the powder and all of the painting and that glue starts to kind of uh, chunk up a little bit, it does look like you've just got like oatmeal under your eyebrow. So that's amazing. Uh, I try to smooth it down. Now, I, I want to say this to anyone watching, um, and I told you this before we started, I have, there is no right or wrong way to do makeup. It is whatever works best for you. Anyone, only thing anyone ever can do is really give you tips and mm -hmm. if you like it, great, take it and make it your own. And if you hate it, you never have to do it again. Um, I learned this lesson by doing my eyes because I would, uh, I'd watch someone paint their eyes and be like, okay, I love the way they look. That's the way that I have to do it. And it would never work. It would never, <laughs> it would never work. Um, so, cause like some girls will, um, they'll do a layer of glue and then they'll do a layer of powder and then they'll do a layer of glue and a layer of powder. And for me that that's when it starts to get chunky. And then I start to get really like nervous and I get scared and I start panicking and then it just so you get falls sweaty apart and, and I, then it's just a whole yeah, mess. Yeah. And then you get sweaty. A whole mess. Um, so like, and some girls will like, they'll take their eyebrow brush, they'll come through, they'll go up, they'll, they'll do the glue this way. And then that way I have literally within the last week found success in just going one direction, doing several layers and letting it dry. Um, and this is just the longest part because it's a waiting game because you don't want to start anything else mm -hmm. while this is still, or you don't want to do any more to your eye while this area is still tacky because then you're just going to rip it up. So well, while we're waiting, yes, uh, so let's talk. Can I ask you how mm -hmm. you first got introduced to drag? So I am, uh, let's see, I'm 26 now. So affectionately, I think you can call drag queens like my age and younger part of the Rue generation um, who really grew like really grew up watching RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race came out, we're in our 12th now. Um, yeah. and, and it was, I watched on Logo, uh, like which was channel 272 if you had Time Warner Cable, I mean Dish Network, sorry, Dish Network uh, back in the day and would watch it at night. I was just fascinated by just like the over the topness of it all. And I mean, like also like growing up, uh, a lot of my favorite films were Death Becomes Her, Hocus Pocus, um, which already have an innate drag quality about them. Uh, I'm also, if you can tell by the way I paint, I'm a very big fan of Disney villains. So somewhere this has always <laughs> been a thing. Um, so yeah, but I, I, watched, I watched RuPaul's Drag Race and saw these very confident men become confident, beautiful women and explore that fantasy with them. So I just sort of always stayed in touch. It was, I think my eighth grade year of middle school was the first time I ever did drag. I went as a very busted looking version of Ursula from the Little Mermaid on Broadway. Like my mom helped me make the dress. I had like pool noodle tentacles, a very beat up spirit Halloween wig, but I thought I was the cutest thing on the block. You couldn't have told me different. <laughs> so were your parents supportive of you know, you wanting to dress as female villains or are you watching RuPaul's Drag Race when you were young? Um, so I, I will say that I watched Drag Race when I, when I first started watching Drag Race, I watched it in secret um, for, while we talk into this next part, I'm moving on. I'm going to put on my foundation because I'm comfortable with how this dries or how this feels right now. Um, 
I rotate back and forth. Um, as a drag queen, I use a bit heavier duty makeup. I rotate back and forth between two foundations. Typically, I have been using, um, they're called TV paint sticks from the wonderful people of Cryolon. Um, and they're wonderful. You'll see a lot of like the Rue girls and girls who paint for TV use these. Uh, I'm running dangerously low. So I've switched back to another that I enjoy. Uh, I'm using Ben Nye Warm Sand, if anybody is following along back home. Good old Ben Nye. Uh, gonna use that and an artist palette to smear this on my face like I'm a masterpiece. Um, so I watched Drag Race in secret um, when I was younger uh, and not, I think, and not out of really necessarily like fear of what my parents would think, um, but because my mom helped me make my dress in eighth grade. I think a lot of that was some internal journey that was going on because um, my parents are absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm very blessed that that part of my journey has been very uh, easy. Um, and then as far as like supportive, I, eighth grade, like for there's an idea that there's two kinds of like queens out there, how they get started. Are you a pride queen? Are you a Halloween queen? Mm -hmm. My basis was a Halloween queen. I used uh, Halloween and the art of dressing up on a holiday that everyone was doing it to get into that, you know, reality and to experiment. And then it really took off in high school when I did not one, but two um, theatrical drag roles. Um, and I think was probably the first, uh, and I don't have any proof of this because my high school has been around for a while, but I think I was the first drag queen on stage for, in a, in like a, in a serious like uh, theatrical manner for Oak Park because my uh, sophomore year of high school, we did Steel Magnolias and I uh, auditioned because I couldn't do the winter play. I auditioned for it in the spring and my drama teacher was like, it's for girls. And I was like, well, I'm going to audition and I'm going to audition for the role of Clary e, and I'm going to get it. And wouldn't you know, Hell I yeah. did it. And she was like, you have to come to the callback and complete drag. I need to see what it looks like. And so I did old age. I went out and got a dress. I got shoes. Um, and I went and I did the callback in drag. And um, yeah, and then I did it. I did the whole run and it was wonderful. That's amazing. That's so great. Yeah, and, I absolutely I mean, loved it. Fantastic that that you, I mean, you have such support. I mean, I know, so you do your own kind of mini show, mini live stream right now called Thursday Thoughts on Thursdays. Yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I troll everyone on Facebook. So I, I watch the Thursday Thoughts and I know your mom always watches. So it's great to just see, um, and your makeup always looks flawless. I don't. I hardly, you know, spend time on my makeup when I do these. I'm just putting on eyeshadow with my fingers, not even with brushes. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, it's just so great to see that your your family is so supportive. They really are. That. They really are. Would you say that, um, or, or I guess, what would you say is your biggest support system? And I mean, it could be your family or it could be family aside. Uh, what has been your biggest support system in your journey? Um... It has been, I'm going to, I'm going to use the umbrella term. It has been my family, both biological and my chosen. Um, you, for me, I, I find that my success has come by being surrounded by people who lift me, I just, who lift me up and who are there for me. And they either offer harsh criticism or they offer support, but they're unapologetically themselves and they support um, me in in everything that I do. Um, and so I've just been, I've been very blessed. I have a wonderful nuclear family. I have a wonderful extended family. And then the people that I have run into in my life that I have uh, brought in as chosen family have just been incredible individuals. Um, because you don't, you don't have time to um, be around people who bring you down. If there's someone in your life and they're just there bringing you down and, or they're not supportive or they're not understanding, you don't need, you don't need that. We don't have enough time for that. You know, cause I, I, I do enough of, of the, the harsh self-criticism on my own. Uh, I, the voice, the, the Alex on the inside is constantly 
judging and critiquing this Alex. I don't need other people doing that for me. Now, I don't need everyone to, to always lift me up and to just um, coddle me, but I don't need, I don't need any harsher voice than the one that's inside. Um, so it, it really is my, my family and my chosen family. They're the, they're the, they're, they're the reason I am who I am and feel comfortable being so. Magnificent words. You're just so lovely. We've got a lot of people in the chat saying hi to you. Uh, oh, hi everybody. I'm Rev. sorry. I'm, I'm like, no, you're good. <laughs> so, uh, Rev, Rev Tommy Abbott says hi. And, Hello, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people. So we've got Elvis in the, um, in the YouTube chat. Although I'm wondering, did our YouTube live stream go down? I'm just going to double check it real quick. Cause oh, I, yeah, we can... we'll see. No worries. We're While you're checking up. on that. Okay. I was gonna say, We're while you're up. checking that, I can explain a couple of things. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we... put on my, my clothing cover. I don't want to get any yes. makeup on my nice dress. So I'm going to put on my, my cat apron. <laughs> I love, yes, I am. Uh, for anyone watching at home, I am wearing infinitely more clothes doing this face than I ever do. <laughs> Either it's like a mesh crop top or it Just is like nothing whatsoever. like naked doing makeup. You don't want to get really makeup on your clothes. It really is. It really is. But today I was like, I'm going to be on camera. So we're going to put on a good shirt. And then I put it or on. I'm like, shirt. we're going to do, we're going to do makeup and a white button down. Good. Oh my God. Nothing will go wrong today. Um, <laughs> That's great. So, okay. Um, so I feel like all we've done. Oh, yeah, go ahead, baby. I'm, I'm ready to. I'm ready to join you. I think I've Wonderful. got just a basic foundation on. I'm. I didn't use Ben Nye on my face. I used my cover girl. Oh, uh, listen. Uh, to quote, was it Jay Jolie from Drag Race? Cover girl won't cover boy, baby. I got to do a <laughs> whole lot more. I have to do a whole lot more. I will switch to like my Ulta hauls and like my like. I'll have like brands that'll be recognizable, but like up until then it's like, get out the spray paint, do a quick yeah. beige layer. Um, so I did everything in my foundation. I went ahead and did my, my warm sand to match everything out. Um, and then I took just a quick setting powder um, and you can use, mine right now is a Ben Nye neutral set, but um, any setting powder you can pick up. Uh, if, if you like it, it's good for you. Um, I, I, I even powder. know some queens who just use mm -hmm. Um, baby powder, talcum powder, because really the ingredients are the same. It's really, it's the same. It's just tinted. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, and mine's even like, mine's a neutral set. I have, like, there's the translucent fair, but like it has a coloring to it and this is just pure white. So um, yeah. just put that over to get everything down. And I've got um, the uh, base on. So now my next step is to reunite my face with both eyebrows. Um, cause right now I look like I fell in a fire and I singed off. You're going to get some Prince Zuko going on. Oh, I could, oh, I could, couldn't I? Let's see right now. I'm very glam phantom and we could be done. Oh. That's it. This is the look. <laughs> um, so, uh, I also, uh, I want to apologize if anyone is out there wanting to be like, what brush number did you use? I could read it to you, but my brushes do everything. They're not limited to the job the manufacturer thought they were good for. Don't put your uh, brushes a in my... a box. What'd you say? Don't, don't put your brushes in don't a box? Don't put your brushes put... in a box. They don't need labels. Oh yeah, no, for, sto for no. storage, they can go there, but they don't, they can do whatever they want. They don't need labels. This is America and you gotta, <laughs> you gotta reach for the stars. So um, I'm going to start drawing on my brows. Now, uh, for now you're you're tinting your brows right you're I doing purple thinking, yeah i was thinking of doing a purple brow and i'm going to be using the purple from my uh ben nye special effects bruise wheel because that is Ooh. the only cream purple that i have and i just put that's it really on my little palette it's oh, on your tile i have on one tile. this was something this is something that hannah and i got in uh college ladies and gentlemen from our makeup, makeup teacher <laughs> Makeup 101, she said, you don't want to work directly from your, I don't listen to her, but I haven't used this in forever. I still have it because I love it. Uh, when I'm mixing, I use it. And she's like, you don't want to go directly from the, from your makeup because you'll, whatever you had up here, you're going to put back in there. Or you'll get I like clean my makeup. Yeah. I'll clean my makeup regularly. I go straight from, I'm scooping and I'm smearing. I don't. Well, and I use this awesome. on other people. So that's, this is the only, this is the that's one fair. that I kind that's of fair. treat with a little bit of care is if I'm using makeup 
Like I'll do some special effects on other people if I'm doing a short film and I'm not going to go buy new makeup. I'm just using my own. So yep, I got my little mirror here. I'm going to try to, I've never painted my eyebrows before, but I've seen glitter brows. I wish I had some yes. glitter and I could do that. Um, glitter brows are very big. Uh, as a, as yeah, a sometimes bearded awesome. drag queen, glitter tends to appear all the time. Um, I will say you have the right idea with, if you are wanting to just like color facial hair that you have, um, for instance, you're not the only one who's colored facial hair right now. If we want to look real fast while you're, I mean, you yes. keep painting, I can, I'll show them. Yes. So this is my natural, this is my natural beard. It doesn't really grow in a lot here at the top. It's got a lot of uh, wispy see-through sections, which is fine. But when I'm doing drag and I'm a bearded queen, I want everything to have definition and drama and I want it to look very intentional. So I go through and I color in my beard with just, and I use my, um, it's a Ben Nye it looks fantastic. character. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's very noticeable that like, because if I did, th which would be fine if I just did this, there's nothing wrong with that. But I like, I'm very harsh. Um, if I go to the store right now, someone's going to know I'm a drag queen. Um, so I'm using that same cream shadow that I mentioned, just a dark uh, coloring to draw my eyebrows in. Now, anybody at home who has never drawn on your eyebrows, this is uh, a process. This is, uh, this takes time. This takes practice. This also just uh, takes some self-forgiveness. Um, remember, eyebrows are, uh, <laughs> girl, they could be cousins. They don't even need to be sisters. Don't try to make them twins. It's never going to happen and you're going to lose your mind. Um, but also like, be kind to yourself. It takes a long time to find a brow shape. Well, it took me a long time. Maybe you figured out in the first one to find a brow shape that works for you. Um, Absolutely. I am hopeful that this, oh yeah, no, she's going to match. When one eye was done an hour ago, it's going to be funny to see them like a, if they combine. I so I'll pin out. Yeah, definitely my right side of the face is like this eyebrow and this eyebrow, even when I'm just like mm -hmm. freezing. Oh, them. when I'm a boy. When I'm a boy, they don't match. No. Um, they... I also have one eye that um, is like a little, uh, the lid's a little lower than the other. Um, it runs in my family. So I have to do, when I do drag, I have to do a little bit of overcompensating for one side of my face. So I don't, because naturally if I follow the same Line. core ideals and I follow the same lines I would draw my face a little higher on one side than I would the other um so uh so with Hannah coloring in her eyebrows right now she's going through with a base color um and putting that in that will add a little bit of tint one thing that I would encourage if you have the ability if you have a powder a color mm -hmm. powder that matches That's um go through afterward and put that over there and it's going to do it's going to do two things it's going to act as a setting powder um, and then the other thing it's going to do is it's also going to add a little bit more color. Um, that's just going to help you in the long run. Um, now, if you're drawing on your eyebrows, um, when I pulled back a second ago, you saw it more. I've been coloring them in. But I do like an open sort of outline, like a coloring book. Um, I draw the shape, and then I go through and fill in. Um, I also use the start of my natural boy eyebrow as the start for my drag eyebrow because spacing is very important. Um, one thing that I did when I first started that I I have pictures to prove and I haven't taken them down because growing is a part of life is I would put my eyebrows far too close together. Um, and I also would like make them really blocky. Um, I'll show you how to get there, but I have a nice ombre effect for this drawn on eyebrow. Uh, and it starts with looking like this. So once you've drawn and you're pretty happy with the shape and I'm very happy with the shape right now, um, you just fill in uh, with color, start more towards the middle where the color is going to be more solid and then leave some space um, at the at the end here. And what I do, um, you can use your finger if you want to. I just take the uh, back end of my brush and I go back in and I'm going to pull down to fade out this brown and to pull it through and to get to help start getting that um ombre effect um and there'll be a litany of powders that will be involved here before too long i have um, a feeling my eyebrows the, are so dark they're not going to show up purple they're going to show up like freaking black <laughs> that's okay that is okay black listen brows 
makeup is uh makeup is painting you're the artist and if you like it then you like it and you oh, own no it and it's your that. look <laughs> Oh, Maybe okay. I'll well, if you hate it, then. If I, hey, this is this is not something I need to go out in tomorrow. This is, I am starting my drag journey today. I today. know. I'm so proud of you. So, Alex, um, would I be considered a fake queen? Would I? No. Would I get, no. 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 Would I get flack would, for going out in drag? No, not at all. Actually, um, that's something I've always been curious lot, about. No, there are a lot of. Uh, of women of biological or um, identifying um, uh, women who who do who practice the art of drag because it's just celebrating and doing that over the top glamour. Um, I mean, the drag community is ever expanding. Um, there's uh, drag kings and queens. Um, some antiquated terms that were used and I don't like to use them anymore was the term bio queen because gender is so expressive and there's so many ways to go, but anybody can do drag. Anybody can do drag. And uh, I encourage anyone to do it. If you've ever wanted to do it, if you uh, are thinking like, I wanna put a face on and go live my best life and slap on some heels, then you are welcome. Um, that's one thing I want everyone to know is the drag community is very, very accepting. It's very open. Um, and if there's someone that you run into in the community who's not, um, Put them in their place. <laughs> that's not that's not what we that's not what we are. I don't want to be that, but like tell them to back off and just you will you are gonna find um, more uh, loving people and accepting people than not in the drag community. I feel like this kind but of no. is where the the drag and the cosplay communities cross over because there's there's an incredible amount of acceptance. Um, mm -hmm for and and it's really just there's no rules and the people who try to put rules and limitations on the craft are um you know are are, are really kind of pushed out they're not they're they're oh, yeah. oh, you yeah. know that is just and that's why i think i kind of fell into cosplay and like i didn't even know i learned last year that as a woman i could do drag and it took me till i was you know 25 years old to realize that I could do drag yeah. as a woman. I always thought that it was, um, you know, kind of limited. Um, but the reason I fell into cosplay uh, is because I just, and I think it's a creative thing or, you know, what drew me to acting as well is you could be whoever you want to be and no one's going to tell you that it's good or bad. I mean, whatever people say, it's, it's your craft and... It's, you yep. know, you own it. It's completely yours. It's not someone else's script. It's not someone else's product. It's your product and you can present whoever you want to be. And it feels amazing. So it is completely, it is, people have opinions. That is what, peop that's what? what people have. And people have opinions. I know, people have opinions, but they don't necessarily always remember that their opinions are just that. They are opinions. They are not fact. Mm -hmm. They are not the final say. I, you know, I'm a, Amen. I started my drag career as a bearded drag queen because I, I went to fair. I had done a summer at fair and I had grown a very impressive beard and I never thought I'd have one. Your beard and is I magnificent. Knew, thank you. Even thank when you, you don't feel it. much in. bigger. Yes. And um, when I came back to the city, I knew that the following summer I was going to, be leaving again and going back and I didn't really want to go back to being I really liked having a beard I never had one before so I didn't want to, to give it up and but I wanted to do drag and I said well you can do drag with a beard there are bearded queens there's there are. there's something for everybody and so I did bearded drag and like uh I remember the most it's probably like intense moment ever was when I was in you know full body and dress and heading to the subway getting ready to roll up on public transport and being you know having a feminizing figure and you know fake boobs and wearing heels and having a wig on and having this face and then having a having a beard but I was met with such um 
warmth and acceptance and oh i just used an awful lot of brown see like even people who do their makeup mess up there's an awful lot going on up there that i don't care for right now i'll try to um, get a little close up can you see the purple i can Let's okay there she okay. is so it's it's coming through i might do purple brows just in sure. you know to work so do you prefer it's so beautiful and dark bearded okay. drag or do you prefer non-bearded drag um oh goodness that's it's a toughie i it's a toughie i love i i actually think i do love when i'm a bearded queen more than when i don't have my beard um uh, mostly because i love just sort of the combination of both sides of me my feminine side and my um uh masculine side kind of meeting um for me that's that's a lot of fun uh so i really do also i just think it's such a striking look um it also makes me feel like him from the powerpuff girls uh, <laughs> yes i agree so, so then when you are in when you are in drag do you identify yes. as male or do you identify as female or is it somewhere in between um so drag and gender identity don't uh mm -hmm. They don't necessarily uh, walk hand in hand. Um, I, I am a, I am a man. I identify as a man. I am a, I'm a gay man who does drag. And for me, the drag outlet is uh, Elizabeth is um, just a uh, extension of a part of me that I don't necessarily always get to express in society, and I get to celebrate the women who really transformed me and made me the wonderful man that I am today, because I am who I am because of the women in my life. So, but when I am in drag, I do use like female pronouns, but I also use female pronouns in everyday life. Like my best friend will call me up and be like, oh girl, or like, what are you, what, what is she up to right now? And I'm talking about a man, uh, mostly because I love women. I love powerful women and you know i'm showing them the respect so, so you use all pronouns i use i use all pronouns but i am a self-identifying man and okay. uh that is my my gender and everything um got it but uh for anyone playing at home i went through and i did the my, i did my brown and then i did a bit of a i have a black like uh like pot of liner that I went through and added a little bit of black in the middle to the back to give it a little bit of shape. Oh, this eyebrow is a touch thicker than she is, but I can fix that. Um, and uh, then I went through with the powder to set this a little bit and then my highlight right here to ombre this out. And now I'm going through with my white paint stick to give me um, a little bit of that, that lift. Oh my uh, goodness, it's already 10.45. I know we're go we're booking. The eye takes the longest, and we're also gabbing. So yes, okay. You... Well, tell me. So then, while we're going, um, yeah. you are going to add white underneath your brow bone to kind of highlight. Is that correct? Yes, it is. So I, uh, you can use because um, it'll all blend out in the uh, all blend out in the end. You can use like a white cream. Um, I use it's this. TV white paint stick. And in truth, if you like, if you can kind of see, and I'm trying not to get the ring light in there, but it's not like full on like white, white. There's a bit of a pinkish tone to it. It's my mm -hmm. highlight. Um, I put that underneath to bring um, definition to the bottom of the brow. Uh, I will take uh, the really like the tip top edge of the brush and help give some of that shape back. If you have maybe dropped some powder down or you're not too proud of the brow line you've created, this is a great chance to kind of go back through and uh, correct any of those moments because um, that white will hide it. Also be kind to this area. This is where your glue is. If you start going in there and tearing it up and running through, you're gonna lift up some of that glue and then you're gonna get mad at yourself. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience because I'll tear through it and I'll be like, and then it's all ruined and then I'm Aww. late for the club or I'm late for a party and or a gig and I'm running on drag queen time and I start to get down on myself. So take your time, put it on there. Everything you do with makeup 
can be fixed, it can be redone. It is not the end of the world. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'll also add a little bit of that highlight to the top. If anyone out there has ever watched Adam's Family Values, this is to kind of give you the Angelica Houston, uh, Morticia Adams filter, just to yes. give you a little bit of definition on top. And um, we're gonna blend, we're gonna put powder on these to bring everything down and to make some subtle, uh, subtleness occur. Cause sometimes you look a little I look clowny right now <laughs> with my eyebrows. Honey. Oh, oh listen. man. It is, no, it's clown realness all the way. Okay. So, uh, Alex, so that you don't have to think as hard and you can We're focus good. on your makeup. And this also goes for everyone watching. So if you know um, the answer or you want to put it in the comments, please, I encourage you to do so. We're going to do some drag trivia. And this Ooh, is let's actually, do it. So, and more drag slang trivia, because I know that there's a lot of terminology out there that even, um, you know, I, I'll like hear someone on RuPaul or, you know, someone on Pose and mm -hmm. I'm just like, what? are they talking about? What does that mean? So I actually okay. did this at my work. I ran a pride um, and we did a drag themed uh, team meeting on Friday. So it was a blast. Okay, get it. And I gave them some, some terminology. So, okay. What is uh, fishy? What does fishy mean? Because that's so something I learned. Fishy. What's a fishy queen? Fishy's term, and this has, I think, maybe a little bit of um, some 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 dated explanation to it. But fishy was a term that was used to describe a queen who was giving you uh, very uh, real uh, woman illusion, uh, kind of like the term passing, where it was like you you couldn't be uh, people did not know you were a man. So because fishy was alluding to uh i don't know what i can say or can't say on your channel i don't want to get anyone in trouble uh i um, mean we're pg-13 so just don't drop the f-bomb and <laughs> okay great um <laughs> we'll be so fine everyone was, understands it, that we're it was talking kind about of a, uh, it was kind of a um a kind of a, a more vulgar way of like referring to a vagina like oh you're fishy yeah. like that not real idea of like a smell. It's very messy. So I don't use the term fishy. Uh, <laughs> but Is you it can considered do a compliment? Being like, I think at one time it was, um, but I think now in respect to women and to the ever growingness of the community, um, I just think that like- You just don't use it. We, we, we've removed the term a little bit. I truly don't even know like what the, because I, I like when I'm feeling like I'm really turning the look and I feel very much like a woman, I'll be like, oh, I'm giving you like what name the woman realness or, you know, you normally it's, oh, she's giving you evil queen realness. And that's me feeling very <laughs> confident in what I have done. OK, um, but that's where fishy that's where fishy came from. It was being very feminine, being very real. But um, you haven't seen it really referred to. Um in the scene as of late not anymore not anymore not as of okay. late because i remember uh, i first heard it on on rupaul they they use yes. it all over but girls are nasty on rupaul <laughs> they're not well kind, and also kind. also like it they are that's such a, a hot box of things and also it's ever evolving i think we as a, a society are also learning that things that we thought were okay, mm -hmm. were are no are not okay, and they were never okay. But now we're we're being more we're vocal about it and just being uh, conscientious, conscientious. Yes, that's how. That's In right terms word. of um, you know just kind of what you say, and and the mm -hmm. uh, the way you refer to another queen, not not yeah. you're saying like not out of respect for the other queen, um, because they might not have an issue, uh, you know, with it, but in respect mm -hmm. to the female everyone. culture mm -hmm. everyone yeah. everyone okay so what about um what is a campy queen then oh camp is like comedy um just uh i'm trying to think camp has a very like specific connotation when it comes to like film mm -hmm. um oh goodness i'm trying to think uh but like 
campy comedy queens. Like you're more of your, uh, let's see, I'm trying to, uh, like the Lady Bunny is a camp queen. There's a very like over the top grandeur quality about it. There's a lot more. Um, like shtick? Uh, yeah, like shtick, referential humor. Um, I think I might fall into like the camp comedy queen uh, genre, but camp is usually describing like the, the, uh, the over the topness quality because some queens will do a little bit more subtle i have a very drastic look um and then some will be more uh reserved so like they're going for really um really smooth blends really uh you know like yeah and it can eye. refer to the it can refer to the makeup styling as well as the overall personality um i really want to know there's like I, I had to do this for like we were talking about it with like film one day about what is camp? What is also camp? for anyone at home? What is camp? Not like you know camping. Oh, I typed a O instead of a P. What is camo? It's like like if the idea of camp would be like something that regard like talking about like an appealing because it's got like maybe like bad taste or like an I like ironic iconic value. It's mm -hmm. You okay. Know, so maybe I have bad taste. <laughs> no, you have great taste, love. Okay, so I'm just trying to emulate. I have like a reference photo, Darling. and I'm trying to emulate what uh, I'm seeing there. But really, I'm just I'm just using my brushes to kind of blend out this this layering, and then I'll probably and that go is back a, with. That is a big part of it. Take your brush through and like blend things out. There's this term called baking where you let things set, but then you have to buff buff it out and like soften what you've got going on. You often do look blockier, look like you've segmented your face off, but then remember, you're gonna buff it out with your bigger brush and you're gonna do a powder over it. So it is gonna soften everything. Um, while Hannah is also working on her eyes right now, I did, after I did my highlight, I, my uh, cream, I put a powder over that to bring it down. And now I'm just doing my very big, uh, eyeshadow I mean eyeshadow my eyeliner I use a liquid liner and so I have to eyeliner first I do do my eyeliner first um I love the base I mostly because I don't know why really I don't know why I do it first I think I like having it as a base point to see what the eye is doing and then I build on top of it mm -hmm. also if you see on my eye there's no color in the middle here so I don't have anything falling into my liner Mm -hmm. This is just my highlight. I go through and clean it up and all of my color, I do it on the outside and this new crease that I've drawn for myself. I've taken what would be like my boy normal crease and I've moved it up. So when I have eyelashes on, that gets filled in a little bit. Um, and so it's moving the, cutting that crease and moving it up. Um, oh but you also see at this beautiful angle, you can see how thick my triangles have to be for my liner, just so that you can see my wing. So don't be afraid more just like brought to you by sharpie and go, don't you don't use a sharpie don't use a sharpie but you know what i mean mine is um, so bad i'm just nonsense <laughs> i'm looking at this beautiful makeup tutorial of this this woman with this beautifully blended um eyeshadow and i'm just like well let's uh let's go ahead and and try to do whatever the heck that is and i'm failing miserably so We'll just uh, we'll just keep going at it, and I'll just try to blend, and I'll just use whatever brush I see fit. Dang it! Yes, and, and so just, just blend, I've drawn blend on, for your life. Blend for your life. That is the thing. Well, it can go away. Makeup can go away, and you can do it again. It is not. There's no rule that says when you start getting ready, whatever you do, that's it. You don't get a second chance. Um, what I have done, I have done my my liner. I'm fairly happy with how this is looking. I keep like tentatively looking at the clock and being like, "Ooh, girl, we pushing it." I know. Um, We're gonna. Hustle. We may run a little over. We're gonna hustle. Yeah. Um. So I have now. I'm going through with um. I use Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Alyssa Edward palette, and I'm taking through. It's the black and the color, but it's called Beast. And I'm going through with one of my little very defined. Uh, liner brushes and I am putting powder over my liner because you are very expressive. You have a lot of creases in through this area. So you will be talking, you'll be blinking and you don't want that liner. If you've ever put on liner and you've like, why did it go away? 
just put a shadow over it to help it set and to help it stay there. Um, it will do wonders. Everything you do with a cream, really you should run over with a powder afterward to mm -hmm. help it stay. Um, it, it changes your life. So I'm just doing a little bit of that um, while we gab. I think and I'm now, still on the base, on the cream base. So I'm trying you're to good. kind of blend that down. Um, um, and I know like, this is all stuff that I've just kind of gathered as like, yeah, I know you put white on the mm -hmm. crease of your eye. It'll make it kind of stand out to put white, you know, on that inner crease, et cetera. Um, but really, most of my makeup tips are just like, I saw it on a Pinterest post somewhere and I'm like, that's good. I'll do that. <laughs> that is now what you just said, Hannah. I want everyone to hear that. Hannah is looking for something that she loves that resonates with her. And then she is playing around and experimenting. That is what you have to do. That's how we learn anything. I think that there's this idea, and I think a little bit of it, I did it to myself. So I'm not even gonna say I think, I'll talk about myself. Growing up watching queens on TV and seeing us style, or like when you're on Instagram or anything, I think we as a people, we see what we think is beauty and we try immediately to get there and we beat ourselves up if we're not there. Mm -hmm. That's their look. You do what makes you feel good and you experiment and you have fun. It has taken, I've been doing drag off and on now. I mean, if you count the first time I ever stepped into it since the eighth grade, I haven't lived in New York for a couple of years and that's when I did it. I've been doing drag for a while and I'm still learning and adjusting. And you know, and that's the thing too, you're seeing beauty through a filter, you're seeing it through Photoshop, a, a, a camera lens. I even look better right now because my camera on my laptop is a little grainy. So there's an automatic blur that's happening. It's like a soft um, filter. Yes, it's very soft. Yes. Um, so Hannah's doing, what I'm doing right now on my screen, guys, is I'm putting in my new crease to bring that up. I do go through with a liquid line and draw it in just because I love the base and you're going to be doing black powder there anyway. Um, and so now I'm going to do some, we're going to cut the crease as it were, and we're going to do some black powder to help. And it looks, you can see the completedness over there. Um, we're going to take some black, that same beast color, and just sort of go out from that line. Uh, this is to help give us uh, a nice, beautiful definition, give us a place to put that white back through here in a minute. Um, so I'll do that. Hannah, what else do you have for me, darling? Uh, I was just about to ask you, um, what is a drag mother? So a drag mother is, a very generous queen who uh, basically acts as like your your go to your guide, um, both to help you help young baby queens um, like experiment and grow with their drag, but also I think to add a bit of guidance. Um, I told I told a lot of people lately to watch Pose, and Love in Pose. Pose they have house. They have like house mothers and fathers in the ballroom scene mm -hmm. and they act as a like a, a moral center to help uh young uh queer people uh find their way and to answer questions and to be a guide because often you know you don't necessarily or ornately have that you don't have someone who can really give the answers and to to help you and guide you so a drag mother is someone who is, is there for you on that front and helps um with uh educating you in, in the in the drag culture and you get you know kind of go into a drag family um and they 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 guide you in that respect do you have a drag mother i do have a drag mother i have not seen my drag mother in forever but i'm very proud to be her drag daughter um uh, my drag mother's name is Cacophony Daniels. She is a New York comedy live singing queen. Please look her up on Facebook, everyone. She has a beautiful voice. Um, she, one of the things she's most well known for is that she does uh, the entire opening song from Beauty and the Beast as every single character live. <laughs> so she sings every single part. Oh my God. Um, and she's absolutely stunning and she's very supportive. I met her when I moved to the city, her and another fantastic drag queen. Uh, Sutton Lee Seymour um, mm -hmm. had a show at Hardware Bar called Broadway Mondays. And all it was was Disney and um, show tunes. And they were phenomenal. And that was my haven. That was my happy place. Every Monday night, it was my treat to myself for the for a stressful week in the city. 
to go and to be with them. And they were so welcoming and so loving and so warm. And I asked Cacophony to be my drag mom. And I know we've been separated by like distance and I don't see her, but she acts as a guiding light and she's so strong and she is so wonderful. And I love seeing her stuff on social media and she's just a brilliant performer, both in and out of drag. Um, and I love having her just as an inspiration in my life. So. Do you plan to be a drag mother to I would, other queer I persons? would love, I would love to be a drag mother. I think you'd um, be a fantastic drag I, mother. Oh, you're so sweet. I think it would be, it'd be so much fun. Um, and Can just you be to my like, drag mother. I would, yes. Welcome to the house. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the family. Yay. You can help I me fix my baby. I will you. Oh, honey. So oh, that's bad. another good term. Hannah just said beat. I want to tell everyone I have yes, yet to please. really do it. Um, because every time I beat my, so beating your face, <laughs> beat your face. From, beat your face comes from literally when a queen is done, uh, doing makeup, picking up their puff powder and covering it. And then just literally pounding their face, literally beating it to get everything to set because you just beat your face. And that's where, that's where I beat your mug, beat your face. That face is beat literally means she has smashed the hell out of her face. <laughs> is it a good thing or a bad thing? Like, it's a great well, I thing. guess, oh, I guess oh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a neutral a... term. You can have a, a good beat or a bad beat. Yes, you could. But like, really, it's used as like, oh, that face is beat. I, it's, <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> okay. It's a very good thing. Well, since we're talking about um, just kind of drag mamas and houses mm -hmm. and pose, I actually did pull up a. Um, a scene from Pose, because ever since Alex mentioned it on um, his Thursday Thoughts, uh, I mm. went and I binged it. I'm I'm almost through the entire two seasons, um, but I went and binged it, and it was so... I know I'm late to the party. Like, I'm no, so you're late. you're fine. Um, but, I mean, it opened my eyes to so many things, and it, it like... It's soul crushing in the best way. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, Billy Porter is a phenomenon. Uh, I don't even believe at this point that he is human. Um, but just... Jerry is still out. <laughs> Jerry's still out. He's, he's human. He's angel, uh, you know, somewhere in between. But I did pull up a scene from season one and I don't feel bad about sharing it because it's from season one, episode one. Oh, right. So I don't feel Let's bad about it. any spoilers. Let me see if I can do this. Um, so yeah. I'm going to share the screen with you. Perfect. And then while, I'm going to, while you're doing you, and we'll see. While him. Hannah pulls that up, uh, we've put in, remember, like everything very harsh right now. We have filled in that white through here, our highlight. We've done a little highlight up. And while we all watch this clip together, I'm hoping you're going to come back to an Progress like a Rachel Ray style transformation. So <laughs> I, hit that yeah. play button and I watch will. me speed paint. <laughs> okay, so this is from season one, episode one of Pose. Um, and yeah, it does. So the, the houses just went through a, a house battle. They just, yes, they're the ballroom scene. They just had a battle. They did. Oh my gosh, probably not. I can hear it, but... I know you can hear it. I don't think the audience can hear it. Oh no. I, why do I Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> well, girl. It's because... I did it to myself the other day. It's fine. Hang on. Let me... Let me try to... Try to do it that way. I'm so sorry, people. Is it coming through at all for anybody? I wonder. This is where, this is where you get to run into all of the fun things. Um,
Listen, these lovely web shows that we have done to expand our craft are done oh, by ourselves in our houses. I know. We okay. are good. I think I got it to work now. <laughs> I was Bless. Really eager. We weren't ready. Well, well, well. Look at the sad queens. <laughs> Disappointed about our scores? Well, you shouldn't be. So gorgeous. As quiet as it's kept, I thought you should have been scored even lower. Yo, yo, wait up. Hold on, hold on. Yo, what I gotta do to join the House of Evangel... You guys house? Evangelista, House of Evangelista. Like the supermodel little man, we're sunk. That's perfect for me, though. You guys ain't shit yet, mm -hmm. but I ain't shit yet neither. What's your name? Poppy. Mm. Lil' Poppy. You guys got some moves. I want to learn me some of that stuff. Give me some trophies, too. You living on the streets? Yeah, mostly. But I work at a bodega sometimes, breaking down boxes, so I can get food for everyone, though. Go collect your things and come right back here. The House of Evangelista welcomes any lost soul. Uh-uh. We got rules. No drugs, no mm -hmm. gentlemen callers, mm -hmm. and anything you mop <laughs> belongs to the community. Don't leave. Uh-huh. I'll be back in five minutes. You want a reason to keep going on after tonight? There go, right there. Houses are homes to all the little boys and girls who never had one. And they keep coming every day, just as sure as the sun rises. Pull up. Work harder. Triumph. If not today, maybe tomorrow. Now daddy needs a drink. Ah. Uh. It's so good. So it's good. so good. And the whole show, the whole show lives in that um, just encouraging, building up your community um, mindset. And it is incredible. It's just one of Billy Porter's many, many mm -hmm. incredible monologues in the show. So, and and in truth, also like if you ever are needing it, Billy Porter outside of being pray tell is just also a human being that is full of those types of moments. Mm -hmm. um, and his just statements on the red carpet or interviews or just who he is that is a hundred percent Billy Porter. I love that too, and I think he won an award for that performance as well. I believe so. I can't believe so. So yeah, I mean, it really, and it, it opened up my, um, just my perspective because I, I mean, I was born mm -hmm. in the nineties. So, I mean, I think the, like my family definitely didn't even talk about, it wasn't as scary of a thing. Like AIDS wasn't, AIDS wasn't something that was in like every household conversations anymore um when I was growing up especially as a kid so I think that that was really eye-opening to me just to see the truth there um mm -hmm. and to see the struggle and it really hones in on and and they kind of go to say later it's like the world hates us we're poor we're black we're gay um and we're trans the world doesn't want us to exist um and it's just like it's it's everything that the world can throw at you in like an entire series and i just i was sobbing yesterday like oh, watching yeah. watching some of the episodes i'm like this is great this is fine so i mean not for everyone if you're in pandemic and like you know already if you need comedy you go find some comedy but if you can handle it oh gosh it's so good it's so good i'm trying to do the biggest eyeliner i've ever done in my whole life i'll tell you what there you I'm, go. i am really good at doing like natural doesn't look like i'm wearing makeup makeup this is really difficult well, for me i don't know what you mean i'm not wearing a stitch of makeup right now there Gosh, is you're nothing. such a natural beauty you are such a natural I, beauty so <laughs> um anybody tuning in uh after coming back from that clip i will go over quickly what i have done while you've been away so i went through and i put highlight i'm you have to you can really, really see what I've been doing right here. So I've got my highlight running through, going straight up. 
um, to help lift my bone structure, pull that light where I want the light, keep it from where I don't. I've got my shadow running through here, and then I do another layer of highlight right underneath to really pull out my cheeks and really manipulate and give an illusion to my bone structure. I have also, but mostly now because I'm bald, this is brand new for me, I'm doing some shadow up in here because I do put, and I do make up the top of my head. It helps when I put my wig on because there's no wig line. And I'm buffing out some of that highlight. Uh, and I mean, sorry, my shadow there. I'm also gonna buff out and soften everything that I have done over here. Um, I think I would traditionally let this bake a little bit longer. Baking is putting things on and then letting it sit and then buffing it out. But I want to attempt to see if I can make my face look symmetrical um, here in a second. Uh, we've also added a bottom liner. Now, if you notice what I do, and I think I love it on my liner, um, I leave a little bit of a gap because I like to do a little bit of white right there to open, widen my eyes a little bit. I also pull my liner past the corner of my eye. So I stopped, originally I stopped right here at my tear duct. I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna extend it ever so slightly. Um, I'm so ungodly close to everybody, I'm so sorry. Just to give my, do a bit more of that slant, a little bit more power, and you can really see it when I squint, um, really brings that through. Um, I'm gonna fill this in. Yeah, I'm filling a little I was bit. Gonna try to try to do that, elongate the inner corner of my eye. One of them looks mm -hmm. okay, the other one looks like a, a bird claw. I'll let you guys decide which one. <laughs> No, Listen, that sentiment, I have, I know that sentiment all too well. You're like, oh my God, this one, this, I did it once and it looked great. I this did it again eye and it looks bad. amazing. Right eye looks great. Left eye looks awful. And I only have like just the worst. I have those, um, those liquid eyeliner pens. The one uh -huh. where it's like a little brush, like a, it's like halfway liquid liner, but also not. And it is being streaky as all get out this morning. So we'll see. Um, we'll and then see I do, happens. yeah. I do a little bit of white underneath just to pop that out. Just give you a little bit of drama. But again, I am not painting for everyday realism. I am painting as the good Disney villain that I am. Um, oh, we're actually, we're coming. Okay. You're coming oh, along. I'm, no, you're looking great. We're, we're, we're trying. We're trying. We're, um, I look we're going to do real quick. Dang raccoon. I think I got too heavy. I got really no. heavy right here. It's okay. You can bust it out. There yeah. is no. I usually do a lot of blending with my powder. fingers. There you go. There you go. I'm going to put some white powder for a little bit of my added drama where I've put my highlight before um, down here just to clean everything up and to really make things pop. Um, also, I'm just going to show you like ugly side of drag right in through here. Never looks pretty. Don't worry about it because your face is like this. No one ever looking at you like this. They're looking <laughs> at you like this. And I got ugly on camera and it's on YouTube now. So we're all ugly together. Um, so Alex, I'm going to do. Your... Oh, go ahead with your. No, no, you talk. But you're good, baby. I'm, I'm going to, I can pick what? it up and go and, and talk to you and then I'll explain. What's okay. up? Okay. So. Is this the first time, I believe you said, this is the first time you've ever done your makeup on camera. Like you've never done your makeup for anyone watching. <laughs> this is the first time I've done my makeup on camera. Uh, this is the first, yes, no one has ever seen me beat my face. And no one's ever seen me paint before because I, um, I hold myself to impossible standards like every human being and I get very nervous. Perfectly normal. And um, I, never, first of all, it never goes this well. I want everyone to know right now, normally I have to redo an eye at some point. The fact that this eye is still glued down means that things are happening really right. And I think it's because I'm doing this for Hannah. I'm doing it for a friend <laughs> and a classmate. Um, but, the pressure's, um, the pressure's no, on. Never... You always do your best work when the pressure's on, I suppose. Oh, God, yeah, you do. Because sometimes when you have too much time, things get out of control. Um, but no, I, yeah, I've never done my face for people before. Normally I'm like, I do makeup and I give like tips like off the side. I'm like, oh, this is what you should do. And then I never, you never actually I'm doing it with do them. It. Wow. Um, well, I am so So this hard. is a very big day. Oh no, thank you. I mean, you're having me on here and inviting me to do this during Pride Month. This has been 
an absolute treat. Mm -hmm. um, and I very much thank you. Um, I think this is absolutely wonderful. I love that you are wanting to educate people and combine our two worlds that while they are slightly different are very very similar and can learn from from both I agree. Um, i'm just happy to be here what a fun like what a fun day this is this has been so fun so i mean obviously this pride month has been has been very different and of course i'm sure mm -hmm. very difficult for a lot of people who you know this might have been their first pride that they get to celebrate or their first pride um you know out uh that they that they would have gotten to celebrate and i know that um it's been really hard on a lot of people. So I guess just how have you celebrated pride during quarantine? And I mean, of course you celebrate pride every day, you know, as a gay man, you get to celebrate pride whenever you want, but during the month of June, um, yes. how have you celebrated? What have been some, some special things that uh, you've either done for yourself or with other people or for other people? to kind of make this Pride Month a little bit easier for everybody? <laughs> um, so I have, well, I think the biggest thing I have actually done was really within this last week was having my friend Jared on my little, my little talk show on Thursdays and mm -hmm. going through, you know, a, like a little gay history um, yes. and things of that nature and like talking with people, answering questions. Um, this has been huge doing this. Uh, this is, I love showing this side of me and, um, this has been great and talking with you. Um, and I think it's one thing that I've, I think been also for pride this year is answering the call that's needed. Um, we touched a little bit on Thursday, so I won't get it. If you really, if you want to take a little bit more of this conversation, I would encourage anyone to go look at my Thursday thoughts video. The link um, is in I the have... description on the YouTube video below. Oh, so thank you, you darling. can just follow that link uh, right um, to Alex's page and see his Thursday thoughts. But, um, you know, the first pride was a riot. It was the, the three day events at Stonewall. Um, and the other thing for me that really has helped me celebrate pride and make me feel like I'm still doing it is, is being a voice right now for where we need it and what cause needs me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been, I've called senators. Um, I may live in PA, I'm still registered to vote because I'm, tra I'm transient and I travel all the time. So I'm still registered to vote in Missouri, which is a, a red state. That, well, sometimes, I don't know, she can't make up her mind. Um, <laughs> oh, so, Missouri. you know, I call senators and I voice my opinion. I make sure that I vote and stay informed. Um, I've used a lot of quarantine time to inform myself on issues that maybe I didn't know about and educate. Um, you know, I, I'm a product of the public education system and that fails you. You realize as you're older and the idea that like, I, while the black, I'm a very big supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and uh, I have had to do a lot of learning and that I think for me is is celebrating pride. It's becoming educated. It's being an uh, being an ally. It's being an advocate, um, and it's being there for those that that need you. Um, and that's that's how I celebrated pride this year. Yes, I may not have been able to strut in a parade, and I may not have been able to be tricked by a corporation <laughs> and buy a bunch of more rainbow product that I. <laughs> really need but will buy every year anyway uh, uh. and that has its own like sadness but you know what that's not that's not the important part it's fun don't get me wrong it's but the there true are meaning of pride yeah and we can all have fun together once we have you know accomplished the the goal that we are fighting for Absolutely. Um, and I, I love that you are, I, I love that you are vocal and like your Thursday thoughts, I, I consider it, I mean, you're a comedian. I consider it kind of your outlet for comedy. That's, I see a lot of that um, in your Thursday thoughts, but it's also, I think it's a great thing that you're doing is you're engaging your community and, and your friends and the people around you in discussion. And you're just really unapologetic about talking about hot button issues. Um, and that's something that I really admire about you, um, you know, both as a friend, but also, you know, I consider you a, 
to be a leader in any community that you're in just because that's your that's your personality you just kind of take charge and so i just i really admire that about you oh and thank you that is that's very <laughs> sweet it is i want anyone to know who is struggling out there um i understand uh the initial fear that comes over when you have to maybe tell someone you are wrong and uh, kind of maybe combat a family member or a friend and that gets that gets dicey um, but you're not alone in that in that fear I've, I, I I really appreciate you you know saying that I'm very vocal there are days that I and moments that I I wonder, do I have like the strength to do it? Like, do I have like the 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 capacity to correct this person or to possibly start this argument or try to have a conversation? Mm -hmm. And is it is it worth it? And, and it it absolutely is. And I know that those moments are going to be tough, um, especially right now with us not being able to actually physically be in front of people. We are reserved, we are resolved, and we're restricted to engaging and attempting to engage in these fights if you can't get to a protest or your health concerns or you know you're you know if you're immunocompromised and you can't go out to a protest and you're staying at home because of the pandemic you're in you're restricted to engaging with people on social media and that's hard mm -hmm. because on social media people can hide from you and in social media they can attack you easier um and you know and like they can dismiss you and they don't have to look at you and I mean, yeah, they see your profile picture, but they don't see the human on the other end. And they also, if they don't want to have the conversation, they don't respond to the comment, you know, and they're done. Mm -hmm. And uh, just keep, keep trying, keep trying uh, and be reasonable about it. Don't go straight to anger. Don't go straight to attacking. Um, try to try to hear them, hear what their concerns are. Um, cause a lot of the time their concerns or maybe their, their, um, their incorrect stance on things isn't coming necessarily from a place of mouth. It's coming from a place of being uneducated and who can blame them for being uneducated? You know, who can blame them? A lot of us thought Columbus was a good guy, you know, <laughs> who can blame them for being educated? That's what they, that's, we all were uneducated. We all have to take our time to, we've had to teach ourselves and, you now we have to take the time to teach each other. And I know that that is stressful. You want people just to, you want it to be an insta fix and it's not an insta fix, but you need to call them in. You don't need to call them out. And um, I agree. Like pose, present, present everything to you. Pose is everything that I wish I would have learned in school. <laughs> you know, oh, it's, absolutely. Well, it's goodness just, gracious. I, a lot of these the, things are just like, man, I wish I would have learned this history instead of, you know, yeah the history of, of the, you know, the colonies, it's just like, there's so much. And I mean, I was in, I was not in the public school system. I was in the private school system, which I would think, I think sometimes is even more limited uh, in terms of the information yeah. that they give away, or, you know, sometimes it's, it is very catered information um, that was given. And I just, I thought that when I finished college, I was like, I'm an adult now. I've, you know, I've learned, I've been exposed mm -hmm. to new things. I, you know, I'm ready to go out into the world, into Seattle. And Seattle is very, um, you know, we're very left-leaning over in Seattle. Um, not necessarily Washington State as a whole, but Seattle definitely is. And I thought I was, you know, this strong, confident, liberal woman. I was going to come out here and, you know, be able to have these conversations and there's so much that I'm just like, wow, <laughs> I had to yeah, just no. really just sit down, just sit down with myself and be like, nope, I don't, I don't know anything. But that's, that's the key though. That's it's, it's, it's accepting that it's also understanding that just because you don't know something doesn't mean you are a bad person. No, you know, I see, you know, it's to, to, to kind of put like a, a soft note on it. We, we see all the people all the time who their, their combativeness to like, uh, the, like the Black Lives Matter movement is, well, I'm not a racist. Of course I think Black Lives Matter. Well, honey, I don't think anyone is, is 
saying you're you're a racist and you are more than not you are not you are mm-hmm. you are a good human being but like I had the the coming to terms with the fact like as a white man I have benefited from systematic and institutionalized racism that's mm-hmm. a tough pill to swallow because I didn't actively go and do anything I didn't ask for it to do I that. Didn't, yeah I didn't didn't ask for it but I but I got it and that's something I had to tell people was like see I it's just like as a white man, I got I got that. But can can you understand the flip side then? As someone who is as, as someone who is black, they also get they get dealt a hand that they weren't asking for, uh, and it just it, it opens up. Sometimes they're open to that discussion and they get a little they understand, and then sometimes they're like, "Well, bugger off! I don't want to talk to you anymore because you're making me think too hard." And you're like, "Okay, well, I'll catch you later." And sometimes it's a conversation. I mean, uh, even just. In my own journey, I've realized, like, I would think I know something and then I would go away and I'd I'd end up having to come back and, like, readdress my own understanding of something so many times. I'm constantly learning. I'm, I, I am constantly learning. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert on anything. (gasps) I'm not, I'm probably an expert on once upon a time. Okay, I'm an expert on Once Upon a Time the TV show, and we could we could have a discussion about that, and you'd be you would not know more than me. That'll be our next but episode. When it comes to there it is, but when it comes to when it comes to things like this, and it comes to you know just the the fight for equality, you know I'm I am not. I am not perfect. I am an infallible human being. I am going to mess up. But the thing that I will always do is I will make, I will make an effort to understand. And if I need to be taught a lesson, then, then teach me that lesson and educate me and let me know. I do not have all the answers. And I would be silly to claim that I did on anything, even my own community, because the gay community isn't in a textbook that I recall growing up. I did not, I do not believe Miss Mann in the eighth grade was like, well, this is the the Dust Bowl, and uh, here's the Stonewall ride. Like, I don't think that that ever happened. <laughs> oh my god, uh, it's so true. It's so true. So I have to, I have to be educated and be taught. I mean, heck, even after, uh, after my Thursday thoughts video, um, a friend of mine called me and said, "Hey, I tuned in and I loved it." He's like, "But I think we need to have a dialogue about a couple of things just to sort of illuminate." your understanding, mm-hmm. um, which was, which was great. And you know what? I'll, I'll be very honest. There was a moment when someone came up to me and they said, Hey, that was great. But I think we need to have a talk about this and, and unpack these things a little bit. I, my internally, I got a little, Scared. I was like, what is this? I'm yeah. sorry. But at the same time, I was like, no, take a deep breath. You don't know everything. Yeah. And they're not, they're not calling you. They're not calling you out and saying like, how dare you? They're being kind and saying i'm so proud of you but i also want to give you more so that you can be better all the time yeah Uh, absolutely so i'm taking a trick that that you told me is i didn't have i wanted to try to do a purple lip i'm just gonna be purple all over um okay and and you said to take some vaseline and some eyeshadow and i'm gonna try to make a lip color um yes we're gonna see how it goes see how it goes that is a real thing if you've got a powder color that you love and you want it, just a little bit of Vaseline and you can apply it on there. You can also, if, if the powder pigment's strong enough, you can just put that on your lip. Um, and while Hannah's it's doing not. her lip. Don't... It's not strong so enough. So the powder's not strong enough? Is it messing yeah. up? I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of like a, a muddied purple, but it might work. Let's see. It's very, ooh, it's very um, illuminated. It's very, uh, yeah, it's very shiny. I think because of the Vaseline, but we'll, we'll mm-hmm. work on it. We'll work on it. So um, where are you at in your, are you almost done? Oh no, we're finished. Gosh, <laughs> you like just went so fast. No, there. Well, I mean, well, it's because I stopped talking and just ran. Hey. And there's always some tweaking to be done, but Can really across the board, I... I can, I can. So there's a lot that's, there's a lot that's happened, but I can walk through. So please do. we, Ooh, actually I'm not quite done. I'm going to do my bronzer because I like to do a little, Yeah. <laughs> this bronzer is brought to you by CVS. It's a uh, Maybelline New York city bronzer. <laughs> is it good in quality? Who's to say, but she has a lovely, like natural 
feminine scent about her that I like to put on to soften some things <laughs> up. Um, so yeah, I love I love that one drugstore cosmetic we can't live without. Everything else I buy is super expensive. It's like expensive Wet and Wild. I'm like, yeah, yes. like Wet and Wild or Give me that Sally or... Hansen. Yes. Exactly. Um, so I went through and I did my, my highlighting and my shadow and I buffed all of that out. Um, looking at my beard, I need to adjust a little bit while I talk. Adjust one your side beard. is more than the other. Ooh, this yeah. is really, really dark. Um, there we go. So I uh, went through and I buffed everything out. I then also went through and did my um, my blush. I use a blush called Victorian Rose. It's from Ben Nye. Um, I tend to look like I do blush sometimes, like I'm from the 80s and I do it over where my shadow is and I pull it up through the highlight uh, and just give me, keep going off of those angles, leaving a little bit of that highlight still visible. Just because you're highlighting bone structure, you don't want to undo the work you've done. Um, I also do blush through uh, the top of my head through here, just to kind of leave the highlighting to the main part of my, my the main part of my face, like that T-zone area around my eyes and then down my nose and through there and give this a bit of a shape. Um, and then I went, uh, I was working on my lips. I have a couple of steps to lips. You don't need this many, but I have like a, a signature color style that I do. My base is this lovely, it's Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, all of my products, by the way, my eyes, my contour palette, and my lips are Anastasia Beverly Hills. You can get that at Ulta. You can get it at Sephora. Um, you can get it at TJ Maxx if you look hard enough. Um, also, if you go to an Ulta, don't be afraid to have someone help you. They are there. They are experts. Uh, they will be able to guide you. Um, so I put a layer of my Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, Seraphine on. And then I, because when I have my beard, um, my lips can get a little lost in the facial hair a little bit. Um, so, and I do this even when I'm, I, I'm beardless. I take um, like a black eyeliner and I will line like the corners of my mouth. And so when you start doing the whole like lipstick face, um, it just creates like a really like lovely, like dark shadow. And I don't know, it just makes the lips look big and full. Cause like, I'm still, I'm only lined in my natural lip area. I haven't, when I don't have a beard, I'll line a little bit outside, but it just makes them look really plump and commanding. Um, I learned that trick on a 2008 YouTube video from the little mermaid behind the scenes, Sherry Renee Scott, who played Ursula. That's how they did her lips. And she was like, the makeup artist was like, it makes them look fuller. You don't have to get like any filler. That's how you make them look bigger. And I was like, I love that. And so I have been doing that for 12 years and That's I amazing. will never change. Okay. So I went in with the Vaseline and okay. then I, I did kind of a darker purple and then went in with a little bit more shimmery purple kind of above. I'm just come in. Okay, there she is. Look at they her. Look, they look almost oh, black. I, I mean, here they're like a purple, deep, purple they're like a go. deep purple, but in the, they look black in the, in the camera. But um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't have so any I, like brighter purple. That's all right. I mean, listen, we're all experimenting. Also, I just want to show um, everyone some things that can happen when you paint makeup. So. Uh, we were talking earlier about how my eyes are two different sizes, uh, or there's a little bit of a difference. So when I'm like this, and I'm being very wide-eyed and expressive, which is how I usually am when I'm painting, um, everything looks very one way. When I relax and I'm looking straight at you, you can see that this eye's curve is a bit more normal, and this goes down a little bit. Um, but I show that I share that just to say that like, if you're not symmetrical, it's fine. You probably wouldn't have seen it when you're talking and you're moving, things get lost, they get hidden. Um, I can correct this with makeup um, and like even it out. But when you've got my, when I have lashes on, you never know. You put a bang down, hang it low. But, um, <laughs> and then I put, um, so did my lips. I shaded in my beard, which majority of you don't have to worry about, but I do a cream base color to like mimic the hair. And then I do a shadow through it just to really fill it in. Uh, and then 
uh, when it came for coloring, I do this lovely, uh, and a lot of queens do it. I think it looks super sexy of doing the coloring underneath and then doing it above that cut crease and leaving all of this open uh, and not getting, I don't do a lot of color in this area. I'll maybe if I'm doing a color, I'll do like a shimmer or like a glitter, um, but I like doing the color on the outside of the crease and then doing the, the bottom part here. Oh, Shanna's seen something. Oh, has something entered the arena? Uh, I've just been, uh, I, I realized the comments were kind of on a delay, but, um, you know, everyone, um, you know, everyone's just telling you you look great. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, so, and um, do you do lashes when, um, I mean, every time? I, uh, so... And do you put them, yes. do you put your mascara on before or after or before and after? Because I'm still There's kind of a, stuck a, there. A, when do you put on your lashes? lashes? I would traditionally put them on at the very end, mostly because lashes piss me off. I hate them so much. Because I'm still, I'm still some. not good with adding on, with adding my falsies. Now, I don't have any right now. I was looking through my makeup and I was cleaning everything up for this and I just, they were crunchy and they were small. That's the other problem is that with what, if I, if I had to go to like a CVS and I pick up like a, just a pack of like Kiss eyelashes and it's a five pack, mm -hmm. I have to stack all of them on top of each other. And they don't, they're not really any longer than my just to get uh, them large boy enough. lashes. The, yeah, they're just, they're not really lar larger than my boy lashes. They may be more, they make everything look more full, but they don't really get up. So I have to do like theatrical grade, like really big and do the stacking. I do, however, it's like a have, fan um, when you blink. It is big fan. It just it, like like this. Just. <laughs> um, oh my god! I do use um, this is particularly this is like this is Kiss. This came in a kit, but I kind of fell in love with it. The lash adhesive that I found that I like, um, or that I'm using right now, it actually comes out black. Which is nice. Your it's adhesive, not like clear I have a black and, and a white. The adhesive is black. Yeah. I love that was new for me. I loved it. And then I also have um a applicator. She's over here somewhere. Specifically for um eyelashes. Like it's designed. Oh, here it is. Well, it's like a little, don't have like eyelashes. A little brush. Well, it's like a little I don't know. Can you see that? It's yes. this. I'm just gonna try to stick these clip. on with the and then you set, and then you just wait, and you do all of this, and pray to God it works. Um, so yeah. I do, when I perform, I do do lashes, just to complete everything, to fill in a little bit of this space. Because that's an awful lot of white, which doesn't look bad. I, like I said, I look like a Disney villain. That's just my aesthetic. Um, but it softens a little bit <laughs> if I do. And I mostly just do top. I've never done a bottom lash. I've oh, never no, experimented with a bottom lash. I was just going to try to stick them on with just the like out of the box adhesive and they're coming up all over the place. So, well, God, I could tell you do use an act from, from drag queen. This is to the children. Mm -hmm. Use an actual adhesive meant for lashes. There are, there are ways you can cut corners. There are things that you can do that another person may look at you and be like, is that, do you really want to do that? And those things are one thing that you cannot substitute out as a lash adhesive. Yeah. I have, I have used other adhesives to try to do lashes and I'm surprised I haven't, I did not blind myself. Um, also use a nail glue to put on your acrylic nails. I, I also, you can use super glue. It's, it's really the same thing, but the nail glue will hold longer. Uh, I once used hot glue and I about passed out, but we didn't have time to think about the decisions we were making. Um, so. Okay, Alex, dear, but, should we put on yes, our wigs? Darling. Should we put on I our wigs? My, I do have my wig over here. I yes, have my, my wig. Poster. My wig is absolutely not on a headstand because I'm in quarantine and don't have access to it. But let's see if I can put on my wig cap. Hair on a, oh, that looks great. good hair. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let me see if I get this. We'll see if I can. Heart right. Oh, my God. Okay, so a lot of people do like pin curls when they put on their, their wigs, or if you have longer yes. hair, a lot of people do pin curls. I have never once seen a difference pin in pin curls or if I just put my hair up in a couple of ponytails and just lay them flat on my head. 
I have never seen a difference. I think a lot of it has to do with, oh, that wig went into the <laughs> eyebrow. Oh, she went real far down. Yeah. I always do that. I always do that. Um, oh. This is a wig from bobbypins.com, ladies and gentlemen. Bobbypins.com. This is where I get her. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love this hair. It is one of my favorites. It is a lace <laughs> front that I oh. spent far too much money on. Just kidding. It's good. I, a good wig. Whenever good I first wig. put this wig on, it is just, it's, it's so voluminous oh, that I look I like, that. I look like a mom. Like I look like a mom who has tried to, you know, gone through like a midlife crisis or something where oh, honey, I want that color, aesthetic. but I don't want to have to brush my hair in the morning. So I got this cut. It's a very universal cut. <laughs> cut. And look uh, at this. And I, uh, as a bearded queen, I love doing a, I love doing a wig where the root matches my beard color. Oh I my it. God. We look great. We look so We good. look so cute today. Also, um, now that you're officially all very beautiful, purple and beat, um, and we've accepted you into the family. I mean, accepted. You were already <laughs> there, you, darling. Mama. Anyone can join. Do you want to tell the children the name you picked before we started? I have chosen a, a name for the day. So my drag name for the day is Violet Tendencies. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Violet Tendencies. Ooh. Uh, I love it. Look at you. You look so good. Oh, look. Oh, God. I tell you. We I, look. I, okay. I, Sorry, guys. The rest of the stream is just going to be us <laughs> checking out our appearance. Feeling. Feeling I could go to the us. supermarket right now. This I is actually some... won't take this off. This is. I, also, I feel like 80s okay. glam. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so adorable. Ah. First of all, that's the nicest this wig has ever gone on my head. I don't, Hannah, it must be because I'm doing something for it's you today, but everything day. has happened so easy. It's like, oh, you have to do your makeup in do front you, of people? No do you issues. you glue your wig? Alex, do you glue your um, wig? Yes, I would traditionally go through and do some spirit gum right here. Spirit um, gum. I'll, I'll, also, if I'm doing a show, depending on like, I'm not a big like dancer queen. I'm a bit of what I think girls would call park and bark. Um, where I like <laughs> to stand. And the song just demands that I stand in one spot and, and I don't just, move. And, and you lip sync. Very expressionative. And I lip sync. I do a lot of lip sync. Also, my drag is kind of, I'm lightening up an eyebrow. Um, my drag has kind of turned a little bit into uh, more like I do like stand up in drag and I do comedy lip syncs um, and things like that. I don't okay. do, I can't dance. I can't dance. I can't shablam. I can't do a death drop. I can't do a split. Um, but I love like making people laugh and I do comedy and like Very playing good. with the audience and doing comedy lip syncs. Um, so yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, That's... that messed up everything. Um, and then I have uh, my, I have my pride, my pride crown. Oh, happy pride. Hello, everyone. <laughs> happy pride. Happy pride. Uh, A sensible fan. Well, this has gone. Oh. We only intended to go an hour, but look where we are. And thank you. We're now thank you to minutes. everybody. It's queen time. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you know, Alex, I, I adore you. I adore, you know, just how, um, open you are and and honest in having these conversations and i'd love to um you know encourage everyone to go try out some drag today try something new uh drag is for everybody just like cosplay is for everybody so our two worlds yes. have, have combined today and with the with the bangs it's covering up my horrible eye makeup so listen i go. before we go i used to do that um so real quick like real real story time Shoot. so um, I, when I first started doing drag, the eye that I did for you all in real time today is usually the eye, my right eye is what happens the easiest and it's always nice because I'm right-handed. So all of this makes sense. It's like trying to do the left side that always ends up looking rough, which is why I did it first. Mm -hmm. um, and you can even see right now that they don't necessarily match. But what I would do a lot when I first started drag is I would get a wig that like would cover this part of my face. <laughs> so I did a lot of one eye illusion, like the yes. bang would hang. Because I'd be like, well, she's painted, but she's hideous. So we're just going to cover it up. But They never you know, match. Hey. And I have learned today that drag does not come easy. Even, you know, even though I've been doing my daily makeup, 
forever. Drag does not come easy to me. So I've got a lot oh, of practice. It's so, it's so different. It's so, so different. different. But it's, it's all, very stylized. You know, yeah. And it's your own style. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. It's your own style. Mm -hmm. but, so my last question for you is. Of course. Yes. And this is just, you know, for fun. This isn't, you know, any anything serious. But where do you see drag going? I mean, because we have RuPaul's Drag Race. We have, you know, the the bar drag. We have um, drag shows. Where do you see drag going? Do you see it transforming in any way, becoming even more mainstream than it is? Oh, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. And I see it. Uh, I, see, I think it's constantly evolving because I, I think what really is beautiful about drag is that it is so it is so um, specific to the individual doing the art. Um, it is so specific to your identity that your drag is not my drag. It's not this person's drag. And there was the there's the club scene and uh, there's pageant queens because like there's there's like pageant cult. I mean it's it is already so expansive. But as more people start to discover drag and find it and uh, practice it themselves, they're just releasing their own artistic expression. I don't think there's any limit to what drag can be. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, there's, I, I just think it's gonna continue to change and just, it's gonna amaze the world, I think. And people are gonna find so much freedom and love in it. And I think through it, they'll also find a love and appreciation for other people um, because this is vulnerable. This is very vulnerable. I mean, think about it. You know, you like you said, you're very good at doing your like your normal everyday makeup. And today, in front of anyone watching, like you pushed yourself and you did something that was very different out of your comfort zone. But it it also shows us who else like who else Hannah is. Like, how do you see Hannah? Like, what speaks to you? And what do you want me to learn? And because like it, it just if you let it, you will learn so much about a person and you'll see um, a part of them that they may not feel comfortable articulating, but they want you to notice. They want you to see that and they want to identify with you. Uh, and I think that's what the power of drag is. I and mean, it's what the power of theater is and art in general, but really I think drag is, it unlocks something and you can, um, yeah. And I think for me, I've done cross makeup as well, so I've done crossplay, um, where mm -hmm. I played a, a a male character and I played it as male, and mm -hmm. I mean, being a cis hetero woman for my my whole life, I think that this type of art has helped me tune into parts of my own sexuality and just the fluidity of my own sexuality because I've I've always yeah. struggled. It's just like okay, well, I'm female and I want to, some days I want to be feminine. Some days I want to wear a flower dress, but some days, you know, I might want to wear, you know, leather. I, I want to wear, you know, a leather jacket and really like hard lines and, and embrace more of my masculinity. So I think that absolutely the, the embracing of the fluidity of gender and the fluidity of, of masculine and feminine in these two cultures is what draws so many people to it. And, um, yeah, that's uh, it's so freeing. It's so freeing, and it I is. I'm gonna stay in this all day. I'm feeling Feel your, I, I'm feeling purple I got princess dishes. today. I was gonna say I got dishes to do, and if you think I'm taking this <laughs> off, you are wrong. This is some Stepford wife. The husband will be home from the board meeting soon. Those curls Real are mess. marvelous. I know. I haven't styled. <laughs> I haven't styled this wig. This is how she came in the packaging, and I don't want to touch her. I haven't combed her out yet, but I'm I'm living for this. That's gonna be a whole other video. We're Thanks. gonna learn how to style those wigs when they finally um don't <laughs> they don't have that out of the bag curl anymore. Oh, I'm so, gonna have to watch that one because I, need I to. am terrible with hair. I am too. This, we don't have time, this, but I once no. gave myself like third degree burns trying to style a wig. I don't. True story. Steamer, oh. steamer fell sideways. Third degree burn all over my knee. I was, I hate it. I still have the wig though, but I hated that. <laughs> that that wig's been in hiding. Oh my gosh. Well, is there any last thing you want to say? Everyone, go watch um, the Thursday thoughts on Alex's page about um, gay culture and queer culture um, and and history as well. So it was very eye opening for me. Um, oh, is there thank you. anything you want to say to anyone before we say bye? Um, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to Hannah 
And thank you to King Khan for having me on today. This has been a delight, something I never thought I would do. So thank you for um, giving uh, a young gay boy in Pennsylvania just a moment to share this with you. So thank you so much. Um, for anyone out there, uh, my social media is perpetually open. Um, so if you have any questions or you need anything, um, you can find Elizabeth Hardon. She, she has a Facebook, she has an Instagram. Um, you can find Alex Stompoli. Um, I'm out there. Please, if you have a question, reach out. Um, you, you know, you, there are people out, uh, uh, we are here. We're here to talk. We are here to help. Um, so yeah. And have a, have a wonderful rest of your pride month, everyone. Like, yes. and don't just let it be June. Be prideful all the time. Pride is every month. So <laughs> pride is every month. Well, July are. is right. Yes. July is wrath. We've decided July is gay wrath. So got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm ready. Right. Um, and Alex, we would of course love to, I mean, I would love to see either a, a virtual drag show or another drag panel, maybe a drag group panel uh, for our main event Ooh. in October. So keep an eye out. I'll, I'll probably be reaching out to you. In fact, I will I be. Love that. Um, and I'll just poach you again. And let's I do this again. I ready to go. Okay. Oh, good. Now that I got this backdrop. <laughs> this curtain. Uh, well, I'm going to play the ending video and uh, oh, great. we'll see everyone next time. We're uh, here every Bye, two guys. weeks. We love you. Stay prideful and, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Let me see if I can pull up our end screen. <laughs>